Welcome to this morning routine of exercises that I do every day. This is a combination of yoga joints and glands exercises that will get energy flowing from the top part of your head to the soles of your feet. It includes movements that are associated with Pilates as well as Tai Chi. All of this is a great setup for a time of meditation and a fabulous and easy way to increase your spinal flexibility, joint flexibility, and your body's ability to carry energy. So imagine now that you have awakened, you've used the bathroom, you've taken a drink of some nice water, and you have a comfortable place to lie back. We start in the corpse pose. Then we're going to do a series of stretches, starting with a stretch from the tips of the toes to the tips of the fingers with an inhale and a release. Feeling that stretch from the center of the body out to the opposite walls and relax. Now, arms straight out from the shoulders, again reaching out and releasing. Inhaling, stretching out to the walls and releasing. Third round, out and down. Now we're going to take a hold of the knees. Just do a gentle rocking side to side to begin increasing the flexibility and relaxation of your low back, spine, and neck. Now you're going to roll all the way to one side and continue to the roll Inhaling up to the opposite side, exhaling, continuing the roll. So as you do each of these exercises, we'll do them three times. Second time to the right, coming up, down to the left. And you're continuing the roll with your head as if you're looking all the way behind you. Third round to the right, continuing that stretch. Inhaling up, exhaling down to the left, and completing that series of three. And we come back to the center. And you're going to release your knees. Bring your hands up over your head as if grabbing a ball. Throw that ball over your right knee. And release. Throw it over the left knee. Pulling your nose to knee. Don't actually have to touch, but just pull it in that direction. Grabbing that ball over your head, throwing it over the right leg. And release. Now both knees. Gently hug them in. And release. So you've done one round starting with the right knee. So we're going to do a second round starting with the left knee. Pulling the left knee in and release. Relax your neck each time you do this. Right knee and down. Grab that ball over your head. Throw it over the left knee. Gently hug it in and release. To finish the second round, we're going to grab both knees again. Gently pull them in. And release. So to finish with the third round, starting with the right knee again. So it's right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And that's how each of these exercises tend to go. Left knee and finishing the third round with the right knee. Throw that ball over. Grab hold of the knee. And release. The idea of these is that you're actually starting that stretch at the center of your abdomen. Now we're going to gently rock side to side after the third round. And then we're going to extend the arms out from the shoulder toward the opposite walls and drop the knees to one side while your head turns to the opposite. And try to keep your shoulders toward the ground if you can. Now, all of these, of course, should be done within your own capacity. I've been doing these for a few years, so my flexibility might be a little greater than yours. Don't feel like you have to have that stretch go 
nearly as far as mine does as you begin the sequence on your own. And now we're going to finish up and come to a kneeling position. So I'll roll to the opposite side, work my way to a tabletop position, which means that my knees are going to be positioned under my hips and my hands positioned under my shoulders. Now we're going to do a cat and cow stretch. I'll inhale and then beginning with the exhale, stretch my back up and then inhale, bring the gaze to the center of my forehead. Inhale, arching the back like a cat. Exhaling, cow pose, letting the shoulders drop. Inhaling, cat stretch. Third round, exhaling, cow. Good. Now we're going to look at pulling the knee toward the nose and extending it back. Left leg, right leg. Now the second round, we're going to do opposite arm and leg. Arm out, elbow to knee, arm out and down. Notice it's opposite arm and leg. So leg back, knee to elbow, leg back and down. That's the second round. Now the third round, a little different. Out to the side, out, elbow to knee, out, and down. This is a little more vigorous than the previous two. If you want to do all three rounds of the same, or all three rounds differently as I have, that's entirely up to you. Now we're going to look over the shoulder turning the head and finding a point on the ceiling that you can bring your gaze to. Like looking over your shoulder when you're driving a car to see out behind you, you're actually developing flexibility in your neck, your spine, your shoulders, your hips, but it's also strengthening your visual field by working the muscles of your eyes. Now, three rounds of looking behind your rear end to the wall that's directly behind you and see if you can find a spot on that wall behind you that you can bring your gaze to. And after three rounds of that, we're going to come back into an extended child's pose, arms out front, your hips settling back onto your heels or between your heels, forehead resting on the floor. Now we're going to begin our standing sequence first by pedaling our feet in a downward facing dog. And then walking the feet forward toward the hand. And releasing into a forward bend and one vertebrae at a time. Coming to a standing position. Take your time. Shoulder roll back and relaxed. Now we're going to start with an arm swing. This includes crossing the arms over and bringing the elbows back, turning the hands up, forward, down, each time increasing the flexibility of the shoulders. Now we're going to do shoulder rolls three times, rolling them in one direction, forward to back, and then back to front three times in the opposite direction. Now spread the legs so that they're wider than shoulder and then we're going to do a side stretch, inhaling up, exhaling to the side. Now it's important that you do this cautiously, opposite. You want to keep the arm next to the head as you're doing this. You inhale up, you exhale down, turning the palm at the shoulder. So inhaling up and stretching, exhaling down, keeping the head next to the arm. Coming up, inhale, stretch. And as one arm goes up, the other arm comes down. You inhale up, exhale down, inhale up. Exhale down and turning the hand at the shoulder, stretching up, 
slowly supporting yourself with the opposite hand and really allowing your awareness to track the sensation of that lengthening that's occurring in the muscles, the side of your body, your arms, your waist, hips, shoulders, everything. Now bring the legs in, round shoulder width apart now. Hands on the hips, we're going to do three spinal rolls. It's the whole neck and spine. Imagine like a willow branch attached at the pelvis, and you're just rotating around, inhaling up and back, exhaling down and forward. After doing three in one direction, do three in the opposite direction. Exhaling down and forward, inhaling up and back, and feeling the lengthening of the muscles in your neck, your back, your shoulders, your sides. You want to really have an exquisite awareness of where that stretching is occurring. Using your hands to support your back, we're going to do belly rolls. Supporting the back, you push your belly out and across, out forward and back and across. So you can do this five, seven, as many as 21 times in one direction, and then do it in the opposite direction. Again, you're supporting the low back as you kind of gently press forward, pressing your belly around and out, straight across the back. This is increasing spinal flexibility as we go down the back. Now we're going to move to the feet, first positioning the feet so they're hip distance apart, hands resting on the hips. And we're going to go back and out, and then straight across. So it's back, across, back, across. And the way I positioned my feet was by starting with my heel against the side of my foot in a triangle and then pivoting on the toes. So it really positions my hips and feet so that they're directly over and under each other. And you want to feel a slight popping sensation on your hips as you're doing this. Now we're going to continue moving down the body raising the thigh so it's parallel to the ground and swinging the knee around three times in each direction. This is a balancing pose. So it's best if you can do this as you have your gaze on a single point on the floor in front of you. Moving down to the knees, placing your knees on your hands, circling three to five times in each direction. You should be pretty gentle with yourself on this. Now moving all the way down to the ankles, pointing the toes down, up, one side, the other side. Now rotate the ankle three times in each direction. Then give the leg a little shake. Do the other foot, pointing down, up, in, out rotating three times in each direction. Now you've gone through the entire body, from the top part of your head to the soles of your feet. Now we're ready for the solar salutation sequence. And there's going to be three rounds of this. We'll start with the right leg back first. Inhaling and exhaling. You point your fingers down. Inhale as you arch back into a slight backward bend. Swan dive forward into a forward bend, nice and loose. Bring your hands to your shins as if you're looking over a cliff. Hands on each side of the feet. Right leg goes back into a lunge. Left leg goes back into a plank pose. And then the caterpillar is knees, chest, and forehead. 
Bring your gaze up into a cobra pose and then press back into a downward facing dog. Right leg went back before, so we're going to bring the right leg up between the hands. Gaze the center of your forehead. Bring the left leg between your hands. Forward bend, hands to shins. Forward bend and reverse swan dive up. Inhaling all the way, slight backward bend and prayer pose. And give yourself a moment to let your breathing and heart rate normalize. So that was the first round on the right side. We're going to do the second round now on the left side. Inhaling up and back. Exhaling, swan dive forward. Forward bend, nice and loose. Hands to the shins, look over the cliff. Hands on either side of the feet, left leg back into the lunge, gaze to the center of the forehead, right leg back into the plank pose, bring your knees, chest, and forehead down, and then lower your hips, caterpillar. Inhale up, no pressure on the hands at all. This is the cobra pose, no pressure. Exhale down and into the downward facing dog. Inhale up, bringing the left leg forward this time. Gaze the center of the forehead. Exhale back, down. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale down, inhale. Reverse swan dive all the way up. Slight backward bend. Hands to prayer pose. Again, as long as you need to, feel free to hang out in this pose. And we've done two rounds. Here comes the third round. Again, we'll start with the right leg this time. Down. Inhale up and back. Exhale forward. Swan dive. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale forward, and we'll let the right leg come back into the lunge. Gaze the center of the forehead. Plank pose. Caterpillar. Hips all the way down. Gaze up into the cobra. Press back into the downward facing dog. Right foot comes up. Gaze up and left foot forward and forward bend. Hands to shins, inhale. Exhale down and inhale. Final time up. Slight back bend and down into the prayer pose. Now from here, you can hold this for a few moments. Nice balanced posture. Go into the mountain pose, hands next to you. Do this as long as you like to normalize all the breath and heartbeat. And then you're ready for your time of meditation. I like to have a cushion. I use a rolled up blanket to support my hips and elevate them slightly. And I'll have a tendency to sit in what's called the adept's pose, which means I'll pull one heel in to the center and then I'll lift the other heel up onto my leg. That brings my two knees very close to the ground when I put the little cushion behind my hips. I like to use a blanket to keep breezes off the back of my neck and back. And then I'll do an alternate nostril breathing to begin using my thumb and little finger to close off my nostrils. In the morning, I'll start with an exhale in my left nostril. So I'll hold my right nostril as I exhale through the left, inhale through the right. Exhale through the left, two, three. Inhale through the right, 
two, three. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the right. And now I'll exhale through the right. Inhale through the left. Two, three. Exhale through the right. Two, three. Inhale through the left. Two, three. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. So now I'll let the breath flow evenly through both nostrils. A channel purification exercise is great to do in the morning to start your day and at night to finish. The active nostril in the morning is the left one. The active nostril at night is the right one right at night. And now you're all set for your meditation practice, whatever that might be. We've gotten a beautiful, energizing, flexibility exercise routine and you're ready for a fabulous day.